Hi, this is Rusty Staub. Don't go anywhere. Profiles is coming up next. Welcome to Profiles, I'm Marley Hall. Today's guest is Major League Baseball legend Rusty Staub. After a prolific 23-year career, Rusty remains the only player ever to appear in 500 games with four different teams and collect 500 hits with each one of those teams. Along his journey, he became one of the most popular players in the Major Leagues. After a short break, we'll join our host Mickey Burns as he welcomes the talented Rusty Staub to Profiles. Welcome back to Profiles. Baseball great Rusty Staub became a New York Met in 1972. And three years later, he set a Mets record with 105 runs batted in and became the first Met ever to surpass 100 RBIs. So who better qualified to pick the five best Met players at every position in the history of the franchise than Rusty? He does exactly that in his latest book titled Few and Chosen, defining Mets greatness across the eras. So let's join our host Mickey Burns on location from Ashford and Simpson Sugar Bar in the heart of New York City as he welcomes former Met, restaurateur and philanthropist Rusty Staub to Profiles. Rusty Staub, welcome to our show, Profiles. Thanks, Mickey. It's an honor meeting you today. It's, uh, it's a beautiful day out there. It sure is. It's New York. Can't it, be bad. Yeah. <laughs> For our viewers, you're one of the uh, most popular players that ever really play the game. Uh, currently celebrating uh, the release of your latest book uh, titled Few and Chosen, Defining Mets Greatness Across the Eras. And your mission uh, was to select the best five players by position in the history of the franchise. Not an easy task. I agree, I, but I took it very seriously. Uh, when Phil Pepe came to me and said he wanted to do this, <laughs> I thought about it, and I, first off, I have a great friendship with him and sure. such respect. It was informative for me. Doing it actually was fun. It made me take a break from the daily stuff that I do, <laughs> pushing myself, Yeah. and I had to get off on the side and read all the stats, and it's, it's eye-opening sometimes to realize this guy had a great career, but he didn't do much here. Uh -huh. Or this guy, nobody really realized it, but stat-wise, this guy in this position yeah. for the Mets ranks. And I, I took it serious. I, I did the best I could, and I am sure that someone will disagree with me, but that's their choice. And that's part of the, of the deal. Now, in the 46 years of the, of the Mets franchise, 848 players uh, who have appeared in at least one game have played for the Mets. Not a lot. I thought it would probably be more than that in 46 years. Was leaving somebody out of your selections who might have deserved to be included your biggest fear? Well, you always have that. Um, once I decided I was going to do this, I knew I had to be objective as best I could. I also realized some people would be disappointed. We sure. did talk about people that didn't make the top five yeah. for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. I mean, Willie Mays, one of the greatest players in the history of the game, isn't one of the five because yeah. it was his last year and a half and Willie was done then. Correct. So, I mean, for the Mets, it was an honor to have him in a Met uniform. Right. But the, the difference is his, his play and his record, I selected sure. in his my opinion. Sure, his numbers and his uh, legacy were with San Francisco. Absolutely. Basically. Now, the foreword in the book is written by your friend Keith Hernandez. Yeah. And uh, he, he mentions uh, that when he was playing for St. Louis and you were playing for the Mets, that you know, he pretty much idolized you as a hitter. Uh, and, and one time he said he tried to say hello to you prior to a game, uh, but that you wouldn't acknowledge him. Is that true and why so? Well, the, the, the truth is there's a rule that when you have a uniform on and you walk on the field, yeah. The umpires were supposed to be sitting in the stands. Yeah. There was one guy designated every, every you know, game. <laughs> yeah. And they were very concerned about fraternization. Oh, and okay. uh, they would fine you, you know, when you go back into the 60s, a $50 fine was fairly severe. 
And that rule has kind of been blown out of the window now. I mean, guys yeah, going out there giving <laughs> high fives and low fives and doing these flips and all this other stuff. But uh, you weren't allowed to speak to the other player. And you could go you acknowledge him. Right. Hi. But none of the buddy-buddy stuff that you see today. No, no. You, it, was, it was against the rules. Sure, sure. So that he was knows the reason. That too. He, he yeah. knows that, too. <laughs> he said you're old school. That's what he said and in the book. He was right. And he's right. Uh, also in the book, you also select the Mets' best all-time manager. Uh, and here it was between Gil Hodges of the 69 Miracle Mets and Davey Johnson. And or Bobby Valentine. And or Bobby Valentine. How did you make the selection for the number one pick here? Well, based on what people meant to the franchise, uh, I may have been, as they say, a little old school on this. Yeah. But I, I thought Gil was the most important manager the Mets ever had. Okay. I thought what he did and what he bred from all these kids yeah. and what they became, they became a, a world championship sure, unit. Sure did. Uh, he got my vote. Yeah. Bobby Valentine and Davey Johnson, there's no two guys who are more diverse. You know, one guy was, let's go get them, and the other guy was disciplined, and we're going to yeah, do it, yeah, you know. Yeah. And they both had success as managers. Sure did. They really did. So there's no one way to go. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I do think that the team that Davey had, uh, the team that won in 86 and yeah. they won a division in 88, yeah. uh, that team should have won a lot more often. I think mm -hmm. the lack of discipline, and we all are aware of what took place off the field now, you know, that a lot of interfered, yeah. interfered with what took place on the field, and I think it cost them championships. Sure, sure did. Uh, and didn't you also play for Yogi Berra back in the early oh, 70s? Sure. Uh, coming from the coach to the manager was announced the same day my trade was. Okay. I was here four years. Mm -hmm, Yogi mm -hmm. was here at least three and three quarters of that. Yeah, but somebody said to me the other day, th they said uh, they felt Yogi was the greatest winner of American pro sports uh, based on uh, 10 World Series championships, 14 American League pennants, three American League MVPs, uh, and led the Yankees in RBI seven straight years from 49 to 55. He also won a, a pennant in both leagues. Right. I, I wrote in the book, and I mean this, you can't put Yogi Berra in a category. He is his own category. <laughs> you know, he really he, is. The people love him. You know, it, it, what he represents in baseball is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. He's been one of the most wonderful ambassadors of the game uh, of anybody. And what a player. Oh, he could play. Uh, now, you ended your career at age 41 uh, as the only player ever to appear in 500 games with four different teams. Actually, 500 hits. And I was going to say that next. Yeah. And collected 500 hits with each of those teams. What was your approach to hitting? Well, you know, everything evolves over a period of time. And as you play, you realize after you've played, I mean, I played 23 seasons. Sure did you are going to have injuries that you have to learn how to adapt, you know, your, your swing to what's hurting. Mm. Uh, hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's a tough game, and to keep on top of it, it's as much a mental discipline as it is a physical discipline. Hmm. Because a lot of people, um, the young kids come up, and they get tired at the end of the season. Everybody goes, hey, you're yeah. 22 years old, how can you be tired? <laughs> That's because they've never done this before. Yeah. And I, mean, I used to have big arguments with coaches and and, and managers, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. when they would like say that stuff about a young kid because they were wrong. It takes about two or three seasons for a guy to start understanding what all the, because the travel is the most difficult thing. I bet it is. I mean, you know, that a guy that sleep. can throw it about 98 and has a good breaking ball. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't <hurt. laughs>